Hi guys. It is a chilly but lovely moonlit night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on us. Lovely. It is Friday night. And I believe that is June 10th or 11th, 2022. Somewhere around there. It is June 10th, 2022. And, uh, before we dive into this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant from Manga Bay, I do have some sad news to share, which most of you probably have already heard that we lost one of our one of our Doomer sisters, uh, Gail Zawacki, has uh, gone off into the great Doomosphere in the sky and it is uh what can we say gail you are an amazing woman and you will be missed sancho and i we had the pleasure of spending a weekend with gail zawacki on the coast of maine and uh i was hoping to see her this winter she said she was coming down to visit me in florida and then she called and said she was having some weird health issues which she was blaming on long COVID but uh apparently it was a uh apparently it was a brain tumor but we don't want to get into all of that we just want to say uh Gail it was a pleasure knowing you and I did have the pleasure of interviewing Gail Zawacki here at Collapse Chronicles, if you have not heard that interview with Gail Zawacki that I had a couple of years ago, or if you just want to re-listen to it, it was a good one. Uh, Gail is a hoot, so uh, I will put the link over to that interview uh, with Gail. Anyway, you know, get out there and enjoy your friendships while you still can because you just never know. You never know, guys, when it's all over. So, Gail, we are going to, uh, I guess we will dedicate uh, this week's Doomer Chronicle and uh, Ecological Meltdown Roundup Rant to Gail Zawacki, the memory of Gail Zawacki. And we're going to uh, head over, as we do every Friday, to mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls to see what's on their mind. And I, uh, I love it when I love it when Rhett asks a question in a headline, but especially to kick off, we have a question: Can conservation technology help save our rapidly disappearing species? The answer to the question, can conservation technology help save our rap rapidly disappearing species? Gail Zawacki would have known the answer to this no-brainer question. The answer is no, it cannot. Okay. Humanity knows in a best case scenario only 20% of the total species on Earth. Yet, humans have at a minimum increased species extinction 1,000 times above the natural extinction rate, raising concerns among field monitoring experts who worry they may be, quote, writing the obituary of a dying planet. That is exactly what uh, field researchers are writing, is the obituary of a dying planet. Yes, then they talk about protected areas uh huh. Well, anyway, you know, actually, guys, I rethought this question. Uh, can conservation technology help save our rapidly disappearing species? And actually, the answer is yes. I Googled it. I Googled it. 
What year do you think condoms, the technology of, of you, you know, uh, if not keeping it in your pants, at least sticking it in something, you know, uh, it was 1654, according to Google, 1654 that uh, people were using conservation technology to save uh, our fellow earthlings, but unfortunately, I guess it did not work well enough. So we do have the technology to save our rapidly disappearing species, but it ain't gonna happen. Okay. I love this one. I was, we were just talking about uh, World Oceans Day uh, a couple of days ago. So uh, the apocaloptimist at mongabay.com, I should probably, if I do a hopium roundup. So here is, here is Manga Bay's nod to World Oceans Day where we went through the laundry list of uh, what is going on in the world's oceans. And here we have a new book uh, that offers tendrils of hope for the ocean. Yes, this is the latest book by conservationist Charles Clover titled Rewilding the Sea, yes, tells the stories of what can happen when governments, scientists, conservationists, and fishermen work, work together to protect and restore the ocean, generating, generating, generating hope. For the uh, for the future, well, I think anybody who wants to know what it looks like, particularly when governments and fishermen work together with or without the scientists and conservationists, if you want to uh, see what that what that story looks like in 2022. I suggest you listen to my video from a couple of nights ago. Yes. <clears throat> While the book does acknowledge that the oceans are facing a tremendous number of pressures due to human activities, Clover calls the destruction of ocean life the, quote, world's largest solvable problem, close quote. Oh yes, the, uh, the world's largest solvable, I would say, uh, very well the oceans, what is going on with the collapse of oceans on every front, every single front. There is no good news about every bit, 100% of the news about the world's oceans is bad, and getting worse. It's worse than it was last year. It will be worse next year than it is this year. There is, as uh, Gail Zawacki in our interview talks about how her own daughter has a PhD in marine biology and how her, her daughter the the uh, PhD in marine biology is this hopeless apocaloptimist. Uh, <coughs> Gail talks about that, and her, like my own daughter doesn't get it uh, that the oceans are doomed on this planet. I I anyway, the world's largest solvable problem. Yes. All right, we have another question. I, I love this one. This, this is a question coming out of Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, I guess I should have just, uh, I, I guess I should have just waited till tomorrow's Hopium Roundup. Here is this question coming from Sub-Saharan Africa. <clears throat> Can the wonder plant spec boom 
can the Wonder Plant spec boom really bring smiles back to sad South African towns? <laughs> the answer to the question is, can the Wonder Plant spec boom really bring smiles back to sad South African towns is no, it cannot. Okay, let's see. All right, I'm not going to do any more uh, hopium. Uh, just not going to do it. Uh, but anyway, I can't resist. So anyway, this uh, the the one I started out with talking about. Well, I just said I wasn't going to do any more hopium, but I just can't. I can't resist this. Uh, this, uh, you know, talking about uh, how conservation technology can save the planet. So anyway, this is a series, I've mentioned this before, that, that Red has started called Problem Solved. Problem Solved. And, and here is a, a, so, you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel. You know where they have a video every week. I just want to make sure you can see this picture. What this is is, I guess this is a a a still photo out of uh, Manga Bay's YouTube video this week called "Problem Solved," and you see that little drone in that apocalyptic hand. That little drone is going to save our fellow earthlings. Problem solved. There you go. Problem solved. We need more little drones. More little drones to save our fellow earthlings when a condom would work so much better than a drone. Anyway, you know, I just can't help but think of, uh, I really wish I could have had Gail Zawacki sitting next to me while I did one of these Manga Bay rants to hear her, uh, to, <laughs> to hear her witticisms, her Zawacki witticisms. Uh, I can imagine what Gail Zawacki would say about that picture of this uh, little dweeb holding the drone. Okay, you will not believe that for traditional people in Brazil, progress brings violence. Hmm, yes. Anyway, okay. What is going on with snow leopards? Uh, I can imagine what is going on uh, with uh, any, just one evolving threat in the snow leopard territory in the uh, Himalayas is climate change, which is pushing top predators, including leopards and Himalayan black bears, into snow leopard territory putting them in direct competition for prey. Uh, anyway, here we go. Uh, I, again, guys, I, I said that I was not going to do any more hopium, but that's all. But I, again, I cannot, you know, going, going through these articles, and uh, wishing to hell that Gail Zawacki was here. I, I wonder, Gail, if you're out there somewhere listening to this, what would you say about this headline, Gail Zawacki? Indonesia should take a leadership role in the Global Plastics Treaty. Yes, <clears throat> Indonesia is one of the world's biggest producers of plastic and a top source of plastic waste in the ocean. Yes, the passage 
by the UN of a draft resolution toward a global plastics treaty provides a key opportunity for Indonesia to take a leading role in ushering in a transition to a world without plastics. There you go. This is like, uh, you know, this is like the UN drafting a, a global chipmunk treaty and having Sant and providing a key opportunity for Sancho Panza to uh, take a leading. Now, he probably would like to take a leading role in ushering in a transition to a world without chipmunks, so maybe that's not a good analogy. I love this. Uh, just so you understand, <clears throat> Rhett wants you to know, this article is a commentary. The views expressed here are those of the authors, not necessarily of Manga Bay, of Collapse Chronicles, or anybody else with a brain. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure that would include Gail Zawacki. Uh, anyway, okay. Moving on. Uh, here's this article about the Tongass National Forest, the largest in the United States, contains 20% of the carbon held in the entire national forest system. Um, the forest is also home to an array of wildlife, blah, blah, blah. Um, Scientists and conservationists argue that the forest old growth trees that are hundreds of years old should be protected from logging. Yes, so, you know, talking about, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, I don't know if it was on Manga Bay or elsewhere, you know, about Joe Biden doing all this, ma making some announcement how he was going to start protecting old growth forests, there was just one problem. Uh, there is nothing about banning logging to protect old growth forests. So uh, we will see. This will put Joe Biden to the test to see if he will ban old growth logging in the Tongass National Forest. Okay. We have another commentary that does not necessarily uh, represent the views of Rhett Butler. Talking about, uh, I guess, this giant new lithium mine in, mine in Bolivia. Good Lord. Uh, I guess Russia. Moscow-based Uranium One Group has offered to extract Bolivia's lithium reserves. I uh, bet uh, you will not believe this one. Guys, once again, this is why I depend on Rhett Butler to uh, educate me about how the world works. I never would have figured this out on my own. But just in case uh, you cannot figure this out, let, let, let Mangabe explain this to you. Foreign capital powers Brazil's meat packers and helps deforest the Amazon. Yes. To conquer the world market, Brazil's big three beef packers invited in foreign capital. Today, all three are transnational corporations with the original Brazilian founders owning only minority shares in their own companies. Yes, foreign investors, including asset management companies and pension funds, 
now own large stakes, which means that ordinary citizens in the U.S. and elsewhere are helping fund Amazon deforestation through their investments. Mm. Imagine that. Okay, what is going on with Sri Lanka's biodiversity? You can take a wild guess in the uh, middle of all that. Good Lord, what else is going on in Sri Lanka? Um, in, 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 anyway, I don't even have to... Uh, I don't even have to let you know what that story is about. <clears throat> Probably don't have here from Sri Lanka to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where in the DRC's forest, we have a tug of war, a tug of war between oil and aid. Yes. So I guess at COP26, um, you know, basically the honkies uh, announced a $500 million aid package to protect the forest in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Yes, the announcement was one of the top headlines at the summit. But now, with the DRC set to auction off oil blocks in its carbon-rich peatlands, questions are being raised. Would you believe this? Questions are being raised about whether the $500 million aid package addresses the threat posed by industrial logging and oil drilling. Okay, here on World Oceans Day 2022, uh, when we're not being uh, hopium addicts about the world's biggest unsolvable problem, <clears throat> looking at noise pollution. Noise pollution spooks whales the way predators would. Steady finds. Whales appear to react to human made noises in the ocean, such as naval sonar, in a similar way to which they respond to the sound of their predators like killer whales. Uh, anyway. Okay, let's go back to Indonesia, you know gearing up to be the leader of the uh, the UN plastic treaty. You will not believe this. I, again, this is another example. This is another example of why I come out here every Friday to talk to the five or six people on the planet uh, to, uh, about why I, I, I bring Manga Bay to you every week because you never would have figured this out without Manga Bay. Uh, even Gail Zawacki probably depended on uh, Rep Butler to explain. Even Gail Zawacki uh, may have had a hard time understanding this. Hmm. Indonesian official charged but not jailed for trading in Sumatran tiger parts. Yes, Sumatran tiger parts. All right, a local politician previously convicted of corruption has now been charged in Indonesia for allegedly selling Sumatran tiger parts. It doesn't say exactly which parts of tiger Ah, uh, they were selling, I can take a wild guess, some of the parts of Tigger that they were selling. Okay, 
this is one of these politicians was arrested on May 24th, but he was not detained. Critics say the authorities' refusal to jail him is emblematic of a core problem in Indonesian wildlife conservation, which is the impunity that powerful politicians and officials enjoy when keeping and trading in protected species. Yes, uh, Ase province in northern Sumatra is believed to hold about 200 of the world's <clears throat> remaining 400 Sumatran tigers. The last tiger endemic to Indonesia following the extinction of the Bali and Javan tiger subspecies. Okay, another question. Okay, let's see if the, the last two questions gives you any clue to the answer to this question. We're going to... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring in the spirit of Gail Zawacki. Uh, we're we're gonna bring in the spirit of Gail Zawacki to answer this question for us. So, spirit of Gail, I have a question for you. Does citizen ownership, does citizen ownership of natural resources, hold the key to realizing? deforestation commitments. Okay, Gail, well, we're going to tune into the ethers for Gail Zawacki. So, uh, so, Gail, yes or no, does citizen ownership of natural resources hold the key to realizing deforestation commitments? I think my Ouija board uh, is saying, Gail Zawacki says the answer to the question is no, citizen ownership of natural resources do not hold the key to realizing deforestation commitments. Thank you, Gail. Okay, now guys, this is, we're going to get a little sexy. We're going to get a little racy on Collapse Chronicles at Manga Bay. Manga Bay doesn't, doesn't get sexy and racy very often. Strange giraffoid fossil shows giraffes evolved long necks to win mates. Yes, the discovery of an ancient cousin of the, of the present day giraffe that roamed the earth around 17 million years ago suggest long necks when giraffe mating wars. Yes, evolutionary biologists have long debated which of the two processes, natural selection or sexual selection, plays a more important role in the evolution of the ungulates long necks. The new paper does not definitely settle the debate, but does add more weight to the idea that longer necks evolved in part due to sexual competition and not just as a means to feed on taller trees. There you go. You know, it's everywhere you look. Uh, the ladies, it's, it, it's all about how long the neck is. Uh, size does matter. Now, what it doesn't really talk about, how does, why do female giraffes also have long necks? I guess, did the male giraffe get the long neck first? Uh, anyway, you decide, does it, uh, does the long neck, was it developed to turn on the female giraffe, or was it to reach higher in the acacia tree? Your, uh, your choice. 
Okay, more hopium. More hopium. Uh, good lord, more hopium. There, there's no end to the hopium. I think I should just come back tomorrow and, uh, and, uh, and, and I could just do this. Uh, World Environment Day. So this, I guess, was, th this is what Manga Bay had to say about World Environment Day. Protect Persian leopards and their defenders for World Environment Day. Yes. For World Environment Day on June 5th, Jane Goodall, how old is Jane Goodall, and 50 other conservationists published a letter urging protection for Persian leopards and clemency for seven scientists imprisoned for their work studying the cats. Don't have time to get into that strange story. Okay, now I heard uh, this on another channel in the uh, Doomosphere. I can't remember where I heard this story. Out of California where bumblebees have been declared a species of fish. That bumblebees, according to uh, the state of California, bumblebees are a species of fish. And this is a good thing because since bumblebees, there, there was really, did not get any specific protection in California, but fish did, all this lawyer had to do was convince these judges that bumblebees were fish, and then they got protected. So, uh, good for California. Uh, bumblebees are fish. That's what it takes to get protection is being declared a fish, <clears throat> a fish called bumblebee. Okay. Do you remember all the rage one year ago, one year ago that uh, big cargo ship, the Express Pearl sank off the coast of Sri Lanka. So what do you think is going on one year later, a year since Express Pearl sinking, Sri Lanka is still waiting for compensation. Yes. Um, the sinking one year ago of the Express Pearl was responsible for the single worst incident of plastic marine pollution in the world. The ship caught fire and eventually sank, leaking its cargo that contained 25 metric tons of nitric acid and some 50 billion, with a B, plastic pellets. A year later, pellets are still washing up on the shore and being cleared away by volunteers. Do you think so? But let's just end up, because I realize I am talking to myself. Let's, uh, Let's wind up in Canada. Canada mining push puts major carbon sink and indigenous lands in the crosshairs. A massive mining project called the Ring of Fire is being proposed in Canada's Hudson Bay lowlands a region that houses one of the biggest peatland complexes in the world and is home to several indigenous communities. Yes, but according to the federal and provincial governments, this region holds one of the, quote, most promising mineral development opportunities, close quote, Yes, which is expected to generate jobs. 
Yes, but those pesky environmentalists say the proposed development threatens to degrade peatlands, which act as a massive carbon store and could lead to an increase in emissions. Yes, First Nation communities have also voiced concerns about mining impacts on traditional lands and livelihoods. There you go. Many of the affected First Nations have issued moratoria against the project or have taken the provincial government to court citing treaty violations and lack of consultation by the governments prior to greenlighting the project and issuing mining claims. Anyway, guys, I could go on with this, but I do understand I am talking to myself. And uh, so I'm going to wrap it up here. And uh, we're going to propose a last toast to Sister Gail. I remember what we have. I, Gail and I, we enjoyed a bottle of what did she bring out? Pretty sure it was white wine that we enjoyed at her Airbnb she was managing in, uh, on the coast of Maine. And uh, anyway, I I think my Airbnb guest might have heard some of this rant. So we will see if that shows up in the review or not. Anyway, guys. Seriously, I'm going to put the link to my interview with Gail Zawacki, and I highly uh, recommend you go listen to that. And I actually had an interview today with my good friend Jeremy Jimenez, and uh, so I will be publishing that new interview on Sunday evening. We actually have a Collapse Chronicles interview coming out on Sunday. Anyway, uh, know what to do. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. Did you survive that? <laughs>